some while ago I published a video about the buddy stick, which is an HF portable antenna system that covers 40 metres through to 6 metres. More recently, I found some improvements which I can make to the system. Now these improvements could also be used on your HF portable system, even if you're not using a buddy stick. So let me describe what I've been doing and why I've been doing it. Well, hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. I'm going to talk about HF portable antenna systems. And as I said in the introduction, um, I'm going to talk about the buddy stick. But a lot of what I say about the buddy stick is relevant to any other HF portable antenna system that you use. Now, I have done several videos on the buddy stick, so I'm going to concentrate on some improvements that I've been trying to make and I hope I have made. The buddy stick, like a lot of HF portable antenna systems, is a compact system and you can set this system up in the garden, get it resonating on 7.1 megahertz or 14.2 megahertz, get low SWR, you're happy with the system, it, it seems okay. And then you take it out in the field, set it up again in what you thought was identical situation, and you find that the resonance has changed. It's not quite what it was before, or the VSWR is not quite as good as what it was when you checked it all in the garden. Now, the reason for this is fairly straightforward. Any system, any portable system which is compact, is very sensitive to its surroundings. The ground beneath it, the location, the layout of the radials, all these things have an effect on the antenna. And it's likely that when you go to your field site uh, out in the open somewhere, that what you achieved in your garden is not quite what you achieve when you set it up again in the field. And as I say, the reason is that a portable compact system is very sensitive to its surroundings. So let's see if we can attempt to minimize this because what you don't want to do is to spend a lot of time faffing around trying to adjust the antenna system that you were quite happy with in the garden. Now I would give you a word of warning no matter how much you try it is really advisable if you can afford it to take with you an antenna analyzer because what sometimes happens is that the antenna resonance moves outside the band. And this can happen with a compact system. If it moves outside the band, then the SWR meter that you may have, or the SWR meter on the transceiver, doesn't know where the antenna is resonant. It shows you a high VSWR, but it doesn't tell you where the new resonance is. So if you are able to carry a small portable VSWR meter, uh, sorry, antenna analyzer with you, then it does help the adjustment. But anyway, if we can try and minimize it, maybe that won't be so much of a problem. Now, before you all start piling in and saying, oh, well, why use a system that requires radials? Why not use other systems? Yes, there are other systems. For example, you can have a magnetic loop. But my experience is that a lot of operators use a compact vertical whip system. It's low cost and it can be effective and it is highly portable and it packs down into a small package. So for the purpose of this video, I am talking about compact vertical systems that I know a lot of you use. So let's now take a look at the uh, buddy stick. This is the coil, the resonator coil, and it's got these tap-ins on it. Now, the reason I like these tap-ins is because they are fixed. You can set them up and you, they're repeatable. If you use something like the uh, manual uh, tuning systems that some uh, systems use, the screwdriver system, 
you can set it up, but the fact is it's very difficult to position it back to a particular frequency. There's no real indication, and you can use a sort of a tape measure or something like that, but it's really not accurate. The beauty of the buddy stick, it is dead accurate, and therefore you know that your setting you made in the garden is exactly the same setting that you're choosing in the field. Now let's talk about a method of supporting the uh, antenna in this case the buddy stick I prefer to have a system that is consistent now buddy stick provide a clamping system so you can clamp it onto a table or fence post or whatever but I prefer something which is more consistent a, a tripod is an ideal method of supporting the buddy stick if you use a camera tripod it can be rather expensive so we've recently introduced the Watson tripod it's a mini tripod that extends from around about um, 0.7 of a meter, I think, up to about 1.5 meters. And that is consistent because if you use that tripod, no matter where you operate, you'll always have the antenna the same height above the ground. So let me show you this uh, Watson mini tripod. Well, here's the Watson mini tripod. Let's measure it. It's uh, just under 0 0.7, about 0 0.65 of a meter. And uh, it's very convenient. I'll just show you it uh, in its uh, upright position. Traditional tripod stand, three sections. Here's the tripod in the garden extended with its three sections standing about 1.5 metres tall. Very convenient method of supporting the buddy stick. One of the very convenient features of the Watson mini tripod is it has a standard camera thread. Now this means to say that not only can you mount your buddy stick on it, you can mount your IC705 on it, you can mount your AH705 Auto AT on it. In fact, anything that will fit a standard camera thread. Here's the buddy stick mounted. You've got the 3 8 inch thread for the main aerial. You've got the knob for clamping onto the tripod. And beneath you've got the coax feed. And here's the antenna mount. You've got the antenna mounted, coax feed completely underneath and as I said the knob which attaches to the tripod and there's the antenna installed on the tripod which makes quite a neat tidy and sleek installation so we've now achieved a convenient way of installing the antenna at a set height above ground and now we need to consider other things that we can do so let me describe these to you. Something that is often missed is a direct earth connection. I found that that gives stability to the matching. And all you need to do is get a bit of copper piping, good old B&Q, and a hose clamp and a length of wire. And then you clamp the wire onto the copper pipe and the other end goes onto the base of the antenna as I shown here and there you are a direct earth connection now interestingly enough even with that direct earth connection you get a decent VSWR and it does work but not as good as it does with some radials so let's now have a look at the radials it's best to pre-assemble the radials and solder them so that you've got just to make just one connection to make in this case I've used three radials and I'm now connecting the radials to the copper pipe. And there you are, there's my three radials ready to be laid out on the ground. And remember to lay them out in the same way, same pattern uh, in the field as you do at home. Now the final task is to connect the coax feeder. Now if you look here, I've used a ferrite toroid. This is 43 mix, 2.5 inches diameter and around about 10 or 11 turns of coax around the circumference. I can't emphasize too much that this is quite an important um, component of the system. It makes it much, much more stable. You get a better match and you get certainly greater stability. The final task now is to test the antenna system so I decided to test it on my two favourite bands, 40 metres and 20 metres. Now the first test was on 40 metres and you can see there that uh, got a uh, 
good VSWR curve and very low VSWR resonance. And then I put out a CQ on 40 meters so I could check reverse beacon. And as you can see on the screen there, there's some uh, good reports there. Um, I think one is 22 dB above uh, noise, uh, so that's pretty good. Next, uh, checked it on 20 meters, and uh, again a good uh, VSWR curve there, almost one to one at resonance, which is uh, great. And then I put out uh, another CQ call on reverse beacon on 20 meters, and as you can see, some pretty good signal uh, reports there. Uh, from Eastern Europe. There we are, that's my recommendations for anybody going HF portable, it saves some time, gives good performance and you'll probably spend more time operating than you will do trying to adjust your antenna. As usual, thanks for watching this video. Oh, don't forget to press the subscribe button if you want to be kept informed of upcoming videos. And if you um, are going to um, invest in uh, some antenna systems, whether it be for portable or fixed station, give us a call um, at our Portsmouth uh, office. Be happy to help. Go on our website and see what we've got. If you've got any questions, pick up the phone and speak to one of the sales guys. Likewise, if you want to buy some gear, we're always able to do some good prices, a bit of... Um, a uh, bit of movement one way or the other, and um, I'm sure that we can uh, do a deal for you. So, thanks for watching this video, thanks for tuning in, and as usual, I'll speak again shortly. In the meantime, enjoy your ham radio, take care, bye.